so let me be taken on page 42 to 45. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O oh Lord, deal not with us according to our sins. O oh God, merciful Father, for it is right not of the sign of a contrite heart, nor the desire of such as are sorrowful. Mercifully assist our prayers which we make before thee in all our troubles and adversities. Whensoever they oppress us, and graciously hear us that those evils which the craft and subtly of the devil or man worketh against us may by thy good providence be brought to naught, that we thy servants being hurt by no persecution may evermore give us thanks unto thee in the holy church through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God, we have heard what thy ears and our fathers have declared unto us the noble works that thou didst in their days in the old time before them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. From our enemies defend us, O Christ. With pity behold the sorrows of our hearts. Favorably with mercy hear our prayers. Both now and ever vouchsafe to hear us, O Christ. O Lord, let thy mercy be showed upon us. We humbly beseech thee, O Father, mercifully to look upon our infirmities and for the glory of thy name. Turn from us all those evils that we most just justly have deserved and grant that in all our troubles we may put our trust our whole trust and confidence in thy mercy and evermore serve thee in holiness and pureness of living to thy honor and glory through our only mediator and advocate jesus christ our lord Amen. almighty god who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee and thou promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name Thou will grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. will be taken from beyond the 16th chapter, verse 2 to 14 portion. Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is in the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples, and the Passover, the feast of the Jews was nigh, and Jesus lifted his eyes and saw a great company unto him. He said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this said to him, for he himself knew what he did would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, for every one of them may take a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which have five barley loaves and two small fishes, but they are they among so many. And Jesus said, Make them sit down. Now, 
there were so many glass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples of him that were set down. And likewise of the fishes, as much as they would, when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, this, of, this is of a truth that prophet should, should come into the world. Turn the page 16, please. My Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his Son and Lord, who conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, lay and buried, he ascended to hell, the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. God did it. Yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did it. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, he did. He picked me up. Turn me all around, place my feet on solid ground. Everything that happened to me that was good, the Lord did it. Oh, yes, he did. I said everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, he did. Once I was lost out in a world of sin, Jesus came and he took me on in. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, he did. I said everything that happened to me that was good, the Lord did it. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, he did. Once I was sick, thought I couldn't get well. He healed my body, now I'm able to tell everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Oh, yes, he did. God did it. I thank him for it. God did it. Yes, he did. He picked me up, turned me all around. He placed my feet on, on a solid ground. When I was lost, thought I couldn't get well. He healed me, now I'm able to tell. I'll say yes, yeah, yes. Say yes, yeah, yeah. Say yes, yeah. Who did it? God did it. Who 
Who did it? God did. I want to know who woke you up early this morning. Close you in your right mind. Didn't let you sleep too late. Woke you up on time. Who made the mountain? Who made the tree? Who made the river flow out to the sea? Who sent the rain? Every time the earth get dry, who give us faith? Talking about my faith. Oh, faith that will never die. You see, mama couldn't do it. My daddy couldn't do it. My sister couldn't do it. My brother couldn't do it. I went to the preacher, found out he couldn't save me. I went to the doctor. Find out he couldn't heal me. I went to a lawyer. I sat and I talked with him. I found now that he couldn't do it. I went a little further. I went a little further. Said I'm gonna talk with my friend. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh, Jesus, make you want to sing a brand new thing. Make you want to shout a holy shout. Shout hallelujah. Trouble over. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Who did it? God did it. God did it, amen. And we thank God for it today. Amen. Let me bow our heads. Father, we thank you. We thank you for bringing us here this morning. Without hurt, harm, or danger, God, you brought us. You woke us up this morning and you started us on our way. And just for that, God, we are grateful. Thank you for our families, God, everywhere. Thank you for keeping them safe everywhere, God. Hallelujah. And we just thank you for keeping us, God, in this time, in these times that we're living in, God. We need you. We thank you for not leaving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. Well, we thank God for another amen men's day. We thank God for another beautiful day that the Lord has brought us here. Amen. Thus far. Amen. I'm not going to be before you alone. Y'all know that. Amen. <laughs> I thank you for Redeemer inviting me again. Amen. To talk about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Thank God for Pastor Milligan and all that assist him. Thank you for this great church. And in Jesus' name, we just give God glory and honor for all that he has done and for all that he is doing. Amen. Amen. Now today, I would like to, I would like to uh, focus your attention on, amen, one word. I heard the Lord, and I'm going to do this as, thank you, and I'm going to do this as uh, quickly as possible. Amen. One word I want to focus on that's very important in the body of Christ. Um, many times we look at, amen, thank you so very kind. Many times we look at the big things in life and we overlook the small things that make up the big things in life. And every so often we have to go back and we have to announce those small things and look at those small things and try to perfect those small things that we have overlooked in life because of life circumstances. 
In this one word, amen, God, I asked God for a word to bring to you this morning, and God told me this one word, and this word is faithful. The word faithful, amen? And if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Job. And I know you might hear, amen, um, you know, when the preacher says turn to Job, everybody, tell, you know, thinks about, Amen. Amen. How he suffered and all this other thing like this. Amen. But I think this morning I'm going to bring just a little bit deeper definition of Job. Amen. If y'all would follow me. Amen. I want you to look at the, the first chapter of Job. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Amen. I'm just going to explain some things and then we're going to move on. Amen. The first chapter of Job. And it says that. There was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright. One who feared God and turned away from evil. He didn't say that he didn't do any evil. He said that when evil was presented to him, he turned away from evil. Come on, somebody. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He possessed it, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, and very many servants. He had a whole lot of people that served him and, 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 and you know, do what, they, what he said. Amen? So that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. His sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one of his day. And they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. Meaning that, uh, amen, he had seven sons. So meaning that um, once a week they would go to each other's house. They would eat and they would celebrate. And so they would invite their sister. Come on, somebody. To eat and drink with them. Y'all bear with me. And when the days of the feast had run their course, Job, watch what Job would do. Job would sin and consecrate them. And he would rise, rise them up early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my child have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. What the Bible is saying here, amen, that Job, amen, after the feast, Job would, would take his children and consecrate them and offer them up to the Lord, amen. Watch this, amen, amen, because even if they may sin against God, even if, I don't know nobody that does that, amen, that would take their turn, amen, and, 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 and stand before their sin to God and say, God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If they sin in your thoughts or mind, Father, forgive them. Hallelujah. Now, there was a day when the sons of God, and the sons of God here means uh the sons are the descendant of Seth, meaning the pure line of Abraham. When it says the sons of God. So the pure line of Abraham came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came among them with them. The Lord said to Satan, from where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth. And from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my, my servant Job? That there is none like him on the earth. A blameless and upright man who fears God. And turn away from evil. Watch what Satan says. Very important. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God? For no reason? Let me explain what that means. Satan asked God, 
You give Job reason to fear you. You give Job reason to be a man faithful to you. Lord, help me. You, 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 look what you've done, God. Amen, praise God. You blessed him with seven sons. And all these calves and donkeys. And you gave him a land of green. Of course, amen. If you do that for anybody, of course they're going to serve you. Amen. That's what he mean when he said that. Amen. Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has. And he will crush you to your face. What Satan is saying is, God, I bet if you, amen, remove your hand from him. If you would take your grace from him, I bet you with any doubt in my mind, God, that Job will crush you to your face. That's exactly what he is saying. Amen. And the Lord said to Satan, behold. That's what he said. All that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. Meaning don't touch him at all, but touch the things that is around him. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Let me tell you something. Amen. The, Satan cannot touch, amen, the man or woman of God. He can only, amen, touch the things that, are, that, that is around you. Ain't what I'm saying tonight. Amen today. Amen. He cannot touch you. He can only touch the things that are that is around you. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? He can only go as far as God let him go. Amen. But you got to remain faithful unto God. I'm not, I'm not talking only just remaining faithful. Amen to Amen uh, to your husband and your wife. You got to do that too. But I'm talking ultimately remain faithful to God and his word. You got to stand on the word of God. Flat foot and declare. Oh, yeah. oh, hallelujah. Declare God's word. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You cannot be moved. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to stand flat foot on God's word. Amen. So God said, only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now, I want to show you something because I'm, I come here to encourage you. Amen. So just listen to me for a few minutes. Amen. Now there was a day when uh, his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. And the Sabines, and Sabines, amen, it means, amen, praise the Lord, fire. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? It, 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 it means, amen. People, not people, amen, mean no good at all. Y'all ain't talking, amen. Amen. That's what Sabines mean. Fell upon them and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you while he was yet speaking, amen, there came another and said, the fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servant and consumed them and I alone have escaped to tell you. Now watch this. I want you to understand that God gave Satan a man the liberty to go and are y'all understanding me? So the question here would be well if God gave Satan a man the liberty to go mess with Job, then why would God send the fire from heaven, amen, and destroy and help Satan 
destroy Job. Now I know, I know to some, amen, amen, this may sound crazy, amen, this is why a lot of people question the Bible, question, amen, philosophers in the Bible and question pastors and, and leaders and stuff, amen, to explain this thing. Now I'm going to show you. Um, why, amen, God did that. In every situation, first of all, I want you to understand that God don't trust Satan. God do not trust Satan, amen, at all. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? And I want you to understand that in every situation, it don't matter what you're going through, amen, it's very important for you to remain faithful because, amen, God is there in every situation that you're going through. I'm going to show you. The, the word fire means and, symbo and symbolize the guiding presence of God among the people. When God sent the fire, amen, praise God, it was to tell, amen, Job, don't you get crazy in this thing because I am there to guide and lead you out of this situation. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So fire was not there to consume Job's mind and to discourage him. It was to encourage him that I, God, is there with you. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Amen, praise God. So the Bible said, amen, that the fire of God fell from heaven. And burn up the sheep. Amen. Don't worry about the things that are around you. Those things can easily be replaced. Woo, y'all help me. Amen. So it burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I alone have escaped to tell you, that servant said. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said. That the Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on the camel and took them and struck them down the servants with the edge of the sword and I alone have escaped to tell you are you understanding what I'm saying amen praise the Lord amen so he kept going on while he was yet speaking there came another one thing after another, one thing after another, amen. There came another and said, your sons and daughters. Now, keep in mind, Job never moved while these servants was telling him that these things were being destroyed and killed and, and, and damaged. All right? So, Job never moved, okay? Now, here come this servant. Amen, praise God. The servant came, amen, in the 18th verse and said, while he was yet speaking, there came another, uh, another and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. Number 19 said, and behold, a great wind came across the, the, the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell on upon the young people, and they are dead. And I alone escaped to tell you. He said, then the next verse said, then Job moved. All right. Amen. Then Job arose and tore a man his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshiped God. When that thing come close to you, amen, when it hit close to your family, amen, and you begin to move, amen, do not be in despair. What you need to do is fall on your knees and pray and remain faithful to God. Are y'all hearing me today? I'm preaching real hard. Amen, praise the Lord. Amen. Job worship. Amen. And I know, amen, amen, worship to some folk is far. Away from their mind when things hit this close. 
Are you understanding what I'm saying? Amen. My daughters got killed. Amen. My sons got killed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So now I am despair. And so now I'm worried. I'm angry. Amen. But don't sin in your anger, the Bible says. Amen. Fall down on your knees and begin to pray to God. Amen. Because the Bible says heaven has no sorrow. Well, y'all ain't talking to me. Amen. It's very important to remember the scriptures while you're going through your heartaches and pain and suffering. Come on, somebody. And you got to remain faithful to God. You got to remember his word. You got to stand on his word. And sometimes you got to remind God of his word. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Amen. Praise God. So Job... Job, Job fell and he began to worship and he said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job did not sin or charge God with any wrong. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, watch this. Now, I'm going to show you all something. Amen. The first verse, amen, all the way down, amen, to the 22nd verse, amen, praise the Lord. Job never sinned against God. Everything that he lost, he never sinned. A main faithful unto God. His whole family was killed by the hand of Satan. By the release of God. And he never sinned against God. You got to watch what you say while you're going through trials and tribulation. You got to watch. It is very important what you do while you're going through trials and tribulation. Now, amen, watch this. Again, there was a day when the sons of God. Y'all remember what I told you about the sons of God. It was the very pure line of Abraham. Here come again. Amen. Amen. The sons of God came to uh, present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, from where have you came? Now, this is the second time. He did this the second time. Because he saw... He couldn't touch Job. He, he saw that he could not uh, get in his mind. He saw that he couldn't get Job to turn from God because Job was a very faithful man. So Satan said, I got to go to God again. Amen. I got to try to attempt to kill this man and turn this man away from God. Amen, somebody. And the Lord said to Satan, from where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turn away again from evil. Evil was Satan. Satan is evil. He presented himself to Job, and Job turned away from Satan. Satan got mad and angry because his power was not working on this man that God was bragging on. Question, man, can God brag on you? Can God call you blameless? Can God say you turn away from who would be a man like that on the face of this earth now? Huh? Somebody talk? It's a way of living. Faithful is a way of living. Honor and loyalty is a way to live. Are you understanding me? Being consistent. Amen. Praise the Lord. Every day, Sunday, I come here. I see how the men, they take charge and they, be, they do things. And the women have a choice. If they want to, they can. If not, it's all good. Because the men, they stand flat foot here. Structure. Come on, somebody. Consistent. Come on. 
Amen. Loyal to your leader. Are y'all understanding what attributes, amen, that a man must have? And a man, amen, praise God, got to teach his son to do the same thing. That's the way the church continued to grow. That's how the church continued to succeed and be successful, amen, in the things of God. We must remain faithful even in our, even in our families. To show our children, amen, how to act when things go wrong. Things are going to go wrong. They're not, uh, amen, going to go right all the time. And you got to know how to act. Come on, somebody. Amen, praise God. Remaining faithful. Amen, hallelujah. So Satan went to God again. Amen. He still hold fast his integrity. Amen. This is what. Amen, the Bible is saying. He held fast. Amen, his integrity. Although you uh, incited me against him to destroy him without reason. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. God, man, God stood up. God said, okay, you want to play games? He said, skin for skin. All that a man has, he will give. For his life, but stretch out your hand and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand. Only spare his life, meaning that you can touch him, but don't kill him. You're talking to me. Woo, my God. I'm here to tell you to remain faithful because the situation that you're going through is not to kill you. Oh, y'all ain't talking. Amen. But it is there to encourage you. Because God has sent the light. He shined the rainbow to let you know that he is in there. That he will never leave or forsake you. Are you understanding me? Amen. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with loathsome. Now, let me tell you what loathsome means. It means yucky, disgusting, smelly, gooey. Amen. Disgusting. It don't look good. Maggots and worms and all of these things. Amen. Amen. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck him with loathsome. Soars from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Are you understanding what I'm saying? He had sores, amen, that was down to the bone. Amen. It was eating half of the bone, but never the whole bone. Because remember, God said, don't kill him. Amen. You can touch his skin, but don't kill him. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, amen. He was in cruciating pain from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And he took a piece of pottery, broken pottery. He took a piece of it. Amen. And the Bible said, amen, he scraped himself while he sat in ashes. And then it came to him. Amen. Do you still hold fast your integrity? Curse God, he said and died. She said and died. But he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women would speak. Shall we receive good from God and shall we not receive evil? Hmm. In all this Job did not sin. You mean to tell me, amen, praise God, and I'm almost done. But, but you mean to tell me, amen, amen, there were open wounds that, that, uh, that uh, God allowed Satan not to close and, and that, Wounds all over his body. Pouring out blood and pouring out that yucky stuff. He was in pain. That will normally would take a normal man out. He sat in ashes and he scraped it. And then the wife came and told him to curse God. 
And he turned around in all of that pain and suffering and he stood faithful unto God and he gave the woman wisdom in the time of suffering. He taught the woman in time of suffering and pain and agony. He still taught. He never gave up on God. When you read the Bible, when you go down to the next verse, Pastor Milligan, it says that that's when his three friends came. Isn't it funny, amen, when you're going through trials and tribulation, amen, when you need that encouraging word, when you need somebody to speak positive in your life, negative always present. Negative always presents itself. These three friends came, and what they were doing, they were trying to figure out what Job did, uh, amen, to cause God, amen, to put his hands on him the way that he did. Not knowing, amen, what really happened. Here comes this word, this word that, that, that I don't like at all. I can't stand this word, amen, but I can't deny this word neither. The friends this man of God had was assuming. Don't know the full, amen, truth of the story. They were assuming things. Telling Job all kinds of stuff. And these were men of age. Now watch this. Now I'm, 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 I'm almost done here. Amen. Amen. But if you read the book of Job, amen. It took a young man, Elihu, Elihu, that's his name. It took a young man to bring Job out of what he was in. Because the old people was talking foolishness, wasn't spiritual, didn't understand. My point is that Job, he remained faithful through it all. He remained loyal. When we are truly faithful to God, it shapes the way we live. In other words, we are able, amen, to be loyal in our relationship here on earth and truly love others. Are you understanding? If you're not faithful to God, you will never know what true love and loyalty means. Come on, somebody. Faithfulness. Amen, somebody. Write that word down. Very important. Faithfulness requires us to submit our ways to God. It comes from a place of realizing, amen, that we are in need of a Savior. And that he is in control our lives. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? When you commit to faithfulness and when you commit to it, amen, praise the Lord, amen, it gives us that, it gives us, amen, that security, amen, that God is in control of our lives. Faithful means remaining loyal and steadfast. Meaning no matter what, you continue to do right. Lord, help me, Jesus. In difficulties, you remain loyal. No matter how it looks or feel, you continue to walk upright to God and to your family, to your leader, anybody that have rule over you. Even you got to show integrity even on your job. If you walk into a job bathroom and tissues all over, you grab the gloves. Pick it up. Come on, somebody. Integrity. If you see anything wrong in the church, amen, no actual question. You know it's wrong. Fix it. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? That's what loyalty means. Come on, somebody. That's what faithful means. Amen. Amen. When the storm comes, you remain steadfast. And unmovable, standing flat foot on God's word. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I'm done, but I want you to understand. 
Amen. Praise God that, that you will not be a good servant if you're not faithful. It says, God protects the faithful one. When we are faithful, God protects and he, and he guards us. Y'all know I'm a Bible reader. That's Psalms 31 and 23. Psalms 97 and 10. Proverbs 2 and 8. God promises his faithful people. Don't you know, amen, when you are faithful, there is a promise. Understanding what I'm saying. God just don't give you nothing for nothing. When you remain faithful, uh, there is a promise. You need to find out what the promise is. Amen. And you can find that promise. Amen. Psalms 145 and 13. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Psalms 145 and 13. You can find the, uh, the promise of the faithfulness. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. God blesses his faithful. There is a blessed faithfulness of a servant. Amen. And, and if you want to find that, that's in Proverbs 28 and 20. Are oh, you understand? That's the one I really love. He said, God also strengthened his faithful. Ooh, God, I need to be strengthened, especially in this time. I need to be strengthened. I need to be encouraged. People are dying. I just heard one of my homeboys, amen, Apostle Kevin D. Nick, amen, got shot four times. He's an apostle in the Lord's church. Died. Dead. So many folks are dying now. Not only by COVID, but by foolishness and ignorance. Death is roaming the face of the earth. I need God to strengthen me. I need some kind of guidance somewhere while I'm living here on this earth. And if I remain faithful to God, he said he protects me. He said he would strengthen me. Second Thessalonians 3 and 3. And for the last one, he said, God guides his faithfulness. If you remember, he said, God guides you. He will lead you to all understanding. He will lead you to a place of settlement. Come on, somebody. When you are in a season of confusion. God will lead you, amen, to the hospital of healing. When your body is racking with pain. Come on, somebody. God will lead you, amen, into a mentality, a, a solemn stage. When your mind is going all over the place. God, amen, will lead your children, amen, and, and he will secure them, amen, when you're walking in the place of faithfulness. How many today can say that, God, I am faithful to you? How many today can say that, God, I'm doing exactly what you told me to do? How many in here can say that, God, I will follow you to the end of this earth? How many truly can say that? How many can say that, God, you can trust me? How many can say that, God, you can reveal your secret to me? God, I won't tell nobody. How many truly can say that, God, I'll pay my tithes religiously every Sunday? How many here can say that, God, amen, I will support my church regardless if we have a roof or not? How many here can say, God, I will follow my leader? Even if he's not leading. Oh, y'all ain't talking. Because why? Because faithfulness, amen, has everything to do with God. Even in disobedience, you got to trust God. How many can say that? I pray today, amen, that. Somebody got something from this message. I pray today, amen, that we will remain faithful unto God. I pray today until he come that we will remain, remain loyal unto his word. Know his word and understand it. 
in Jesus' name. Men, men of my mouth, hasten of my be accepted in thy sight, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Faithfulness. Let us all remain faithful no matter what the situation. Reverend Richardson taught us this morning a great lesson about faithfulness. Thank you, Reverend Richardson. Good job, well done. Thank you for letting God use you for his honor and his glory in faithfulness. If there's one person who's setting in their cause, or even in this building, who don't know the God that Reverend Richardson just preached about, To God that give permission to Satan that he tempt Job. If you don't notice God, and if you're not a child of God, a believer of God, I'm asking you not to leave the parking lot or the vicinity this morning before you come. And accept God as your personal Savior. If we ever needed God, we needed him now. And you heard Reverend Richardson just spoke about when his friend got shot four times. We don't know what's going to happen in the next five minutes. Don't take that chance. I'm asking you after this service is over. If you will come and like to accept Christ as your Savior. I'm asking you to come. Come to the pastor office. Have a conversation with him. And I promise if you do that, he would lead you and guide you in the right direction. Please, we are living in trouble some time now. And I'm asking you to please accept Jesus as your personal Savior. Please. Come to Christ. Give him your life. And I'll promise you that he'll protect you as he protect Job from that old serpent. Is there one? Come to Jesus. Let us pray. Our Father <coughs> and our God, Father God, as we stand in your presence, I'm asking you, Lord, to please help each and every one of us to remain faithful to you, Lord. Remember, help us to remain faithful no matter what the situation is, how bad it's getting. Just help us, Lord, because we know if we remain faithful to you soon and very soon, you're going to lead us out of that misery. You will lead us out of that trouble, sadness. Father God, help us to be faithful, Lord. 
that we may always come and look to you for our strength. Father God, help us, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for waking us up early this morning. We thank you for waking us up in our right mind. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to robe ourselves. We thank you, Lord, that when we went into the kitchen, open our refrigerator, there was food there, Lord, whom you have provided for us. Oh, Father, you are good God. But help us, Lord, to remain faithful to you. And if we remain faithful to you, you will deliver. Help us, Lord. Father God, we're going through hard times now. Father God, it just seems as we look back to what Job went through, it seems that we are going through a situation that we don't have control of. But Lord, if you if we help us just to remain faithful to you, you will remove this pandemic. Help us, Lord. Father God, we have so much to thank you for, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the gospel. We thank you for your words. We thank you for the song. We thank you for these faithful workers that you have put in this church. We thank you, Lord, for a great pastor. We thank you for the men who are celebrating the men's day today, Lord. Father God, please touch each and every one of us, men. Father God, help us, Lord, that we will remain faithful to you, whether we be a few or many. Be with us, good Lord. Father God, we may be few in numbers, but if we remain faithful to you and we keep the faith, you'll help us to remove mountains. And as Reverend Richardson said, if we remain faithful, the church will grow. He will add it, men and women to the church, Lord. Father, thank you for our leaders. Thank you for every blessing that you have given us. But Father God, I'm asking you right now, Lord, to visit every hospital, visit every nursing home, visit every rehabilitation, home, Lord. And Father God, for those who are going through sickness, those who need therapy, Father God, I'm asking you, Lord, to stretch forth your powerful arms and heal them, Lord. And Father God, after you heal them, Lord, would you please nurse them back to health? Remember that this man or woman who's going through heart problems, who are going through kidney, liver, or whatever their disease may be, Lord, be with them. Oh, Father God, some even can't call your name this morning, but we are asking you to please, Lord, heal them, touch them. Tell them, Lord, like you told the sick to pick up your bed and walk. <coughs> Father God, thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings. Thank you for healing. 
We're asking you, Lord, to please, Lord, just look over this world, look over this land, and see the evilness, the hatred, the prejudice that is going on. Please, Lord, help us to stop it. Take all hatred away out of our hearts and fill it with love and kindness and faith. But Father God, we want you to be with the bereaved family this morning, Lord. There's so many, Lord, I can't even call their names. But you know who they are, Lord. You know what they're going through. I'm asking you to comfort them in the time of bereavement. Let them know, Lord, that their hearts are sad now. But just let, just let them know if they remain faithful. That joy will return to their heart. That you will make them jump up and down with joy. If they only come to you and remain faithful to you. Remember those who are behind prison bars this morning, good Lord. Father God, they have committed crimes, but yet they are your children. And we are asking you for help for them, Lord. Father God, touch each and every one of them. Go into the prison and rehabilitate them, Lord, and bring them back into society. And those who are there by false accusation, we are asking you to open up doors for them, Lord. Oh, Father God, we love you. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. For this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Though the storm keep on raging in my life. Sometimes it's hard to tell the night from the day. Still a hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know you lead me safely to the blessed place he has
safely to the blessed place he has prepared. But if the storm don't cease and if be storm in this soul soul of mine and other wind and discouragement the rain is gonna fall but in the word of God I've, I've got an anchor that keep me steadfast unmovable in spite of the time, but if the wind don't cease, and if the rain keeps right on blowing, my So been anchored in my 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 soul been anchored my soul been anchored my soul been anchored my soul been anchored my 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 my, 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 my soul been naked, my soul been naked, my soul been naked, my soul been naked, my soul been naked. First of all, let me thank our Lord and Savior Dre to be here and allow us, for each and one of us, to be here this morning in the Lord Jesus Christ house. And we want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, first, I want to thank each and every one, those that are in your car, the few that is in this building. Thank you for supporting the Men's Day program. We want to thank each and every one of you this morning for that. And we want to thank, first of all, let me thank Jordan for participating in the literature. Let me thank Samuel for participating in the scripture. Let me thank Brother Ricky for that beautiful solo song that he gave us. And let me thank the Reverend John for that very powerful prayer. And most of all, let me thank Brother Richmond, for that powerful message, being faithful in the Lord Jesus Christ. And name that I call, you are being faithful in the Lord Jesus Christ, because when I asked you to participate, you did not say no. So that is being faithful in the Lord Jesus Christ, participating in his service. Thank each and every one of you for that. And I want to thank you now, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for what he have done on Calvary. But most of all, Lord, we just want to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory that you put upon us each and every day. 
We ask and I'll save it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us all stand and look to the Lord to be dismissed. May the grace of God, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forever. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, let all of God's children say, Amen.